They should both be the same. They should be going the same direction. Turn and face the strange ch, ch changes Just gonna have to be a different man Time may change me But I can't trace time That was really good <laughs> <laughs> Ode to David Bowie Well, I don't have to worry about being demonetized for that Because I think you sound better Oh no, nobody beats Bowie Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And every Monday, we sit down on a couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to yeah. it. Man, since we started keto, there's been a lot of changes. That's true. Like for instance, I used to dye my hair when we started this keto thing, and that's not a thing anymore. That is absolutely true, but you know what is still a thing? You still have a different hairstyle every single day. Probably. Probably that's true. <laughs> Welcome to Coffee Talk with Rachel and Joe. And today's subject is we're going to talk about five things, plus a bonus, mm -hmm. that we used to do on keto that we no longer do. Well, I, I still do drink a lot of coffee. You do do so that. that. That's something that's forever. Coffee is forever. But what is not forever is net carbs. We don't do net carbs anymore. That is absolutely true. When we first got started on keto, we were all about the net carb. Today we do total carbs slash net carbs with a little bit of a hiccup. But here's the thing. When we started on keto over three years ago, there's a huge difference between then and now. And you know what that is? Keto products. When we started, maybe you had like keto bars. Yeah. Maybe keto brick to, at the very beginning. Even that wasn't around yet. But it was like, you're doing carbs on vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's what we were doing, that magical keto math equation, total carbs minus the fiber equals net carbs. But now there are so many products that have completely been created around manipulating that math equation. Yeah, using fibers that like aren't really undigestible. And right. I mean, just... Lots of wonkiness, and it's super easy now to make like 200 total carbs, zero net carbs, and now you're going off the rails and everything else. And so we switched to more of a total carb protocol, but what we do is we're like, even on our dessert day, when we're gonna have a little bit of something, we do a net carb sort of, but we put a total carb cap to right. make sure that we don't go off the rails. Yeah. Net carbs isn't a real thing. It was made up by the food industry years ago to sell you more Atkins products. So the ultimate thing is you have to like look at the ingredients and you have to go, you know what? This is something that I'm not as worried about, like the fiber that's in asparagus. But when you see something like IMO fiber, maybe you should be just a little suspect. Well, and it doesn't mean that we don't enjoy keto treats. It just means that we face the truth of how many total carbs are in that product. Yeah. So number two, and this is a big one. And this is something that really was a stumbling block for me when I first got started on keto. And that is trying to hit your fat macro. Yes. When I first got started on keto and I was about six months ahead of Rachel, I played such math games trying to figure out like, how am I going to fit all this fat in? Because at the end of the day, I would look at all of my food and be like, I still have like 50 grams of fat left, but I don't have any protein left and I don't have any carbs. The only thing I can do now is eat like a stick of butter. And that is exactly what we did. I can remember going to bed at night and like the last like thing that I did was make a black coffee with like three tablespoons of butter in it and then like good night because yeah. I wanted to make sure that I got all of my fat in for the day. Yeah, the fat macro is a lever. You have to look at your macros like this. When you're figuring out how much you're supposed to eat of each thing, you want to look at, first of all, your carbohydrates and keep them as low as possible. We suggest keeping it under 20 total carbs, or if you're going to do net carbs, only subtracting like the fibers from things like vegetables and stuff like that, but don't subtract, you know, fibers that are in like bars and things like that. Yeah. 
After that, you're gonna look at your protein. You wanna make sure you're hitting your protein goal. The fat, you don't have to hit that, unless of course you don't have any fat on your body. But me, like I got giant man boobs and stuff, so I've got plenty of fat to aid into those macros on their own. I get some junk in my trunk. We could, we can, we've got at least three tablespoons of butter back there that we can like, you know, we can rely on. Not really, you're looking pretty good over Thank there. Thank you, yeah, but there's, yeah. At least three tablespoons. <laughs> the bottom line is you don't have to hit that fat macro. Kind of get past that and look at, at the end of the day, if you're full and there's still some fat macros, don't worry about it. It's just gonna come off of your body. The only time you really have to worry about making sure you get all that fat in is when you're trying to maintain your weight and you don't have any extra fat left on your body. Exactly. Now that brings us to number three, something that I thought I would never get through a day without. And now- Coffee? I've no, no, that's still a thing. That's a forever thing. But what is not a forever thing for me is mug cakes. Yes. We do not rely on mug cakes or mug breads to get through the day. And I can remember probably the first six months at least we had a mug cake every day. I would say beyond six months, if you probably look at our first year of videos and like whenever we did a what we're eating in the day, there was always a mug cake. The amount yeah. of protein powder that we used to go through between protein powder and right. almond flour, it was like a tub of protein powder and a tub of almond flour. And it's just something that we just don't do very often. Remember those giant jugs of protein powder that were gray. Like, yes. oh my gosh, we went through so many of those. Now, the reason we just don't do mug cakes that often is because we kind of cut back on the dessert and it goes all the way back to number one, that a lot of our mug cakes, though they were like very satiating, they were high in total carbs and we were overdoing it sometimes. Right. There were days where we were eating two or three mug cakes in a day and that just was not helping us along in our keto journey. It's funny that like I don't have tubular food on my plate every single meal now. <laughs> okay, number four. This kind of goes back to number two with the fat and that is protein. Oh my goodness, we were so afraid of protein before. Terrified of it. And that's because like every keto expert that was out there that was writing a blog post or on YouTube was saying, you can't eat too much protein. If you eat too much protein, you're gonna go into gluconeogenesis, your body's gonna create too much glucose, you're gonna get kicked out of ketosis and you're gonna have disastrous results. So I avoided tuna fish, which I really liked, chicken breast, forget it. I love chicken breast, but we were afraid to eat it because the protein content was too high and you didn't have enough fat. Yeah. I mean, I only recently started eating shrimp again, which I love, but I was afraid of it. Yeah, we would like look at our different recipes and everything called for chicken thighs and chicken, you know, you know, chicken legs. And Rachel didn't like any of that stuff, it's but like tough. the problem was is if you use the chicken breast, it upped the protein, there was no way to add in the fat, it messed with all my recipes, and we were just terrified to eat all the protein. The bottom line is this, protein is the most important thing that you consume. You've got to hit your protein. If you look at your macros, if your macros are say 130 grams of protein, you need at least that much and it's okay to go over. If you don't get enough protein, you're gonna have hair loss, you're gonna like not have all the satiation, you need to get that protein in. That's the most important one and that's the thing that we just slowly start incorporating higher protein foods and we're happier now. Yeah, but it was because that's what everybody was telling us to do and we were following directions. And another thing that we were following the directions on was what time of day that you were allowed to eat. Yes. And it had to be the same. I mean, ours was like two o'clock on the button, no negotiations because this is the eating window and it didn't matter if like it fit in with a schedule for the day or not. You had to eat the same time every single day and have a certain like sized window. Now we are not against intermittent fasting. No. Now I do believe that you need to intermittent fast, like change it up a little bit because our body is amazing. Super smart. And if you do the same thing every single day, your body's gonna start adapting to that and you need to kind of trick it up. Maybe intermittent fast three or four days a week, but that's a whole nother subject. We're more talking about like, I never saw a keto guru or an expert tell you, you can intermittent fast by skipping dinner. Yes, it was always like breakfast and I get up super early. So waiting until two o'clock when I sometimes get up at 4.30 in the morning or five in the morning, that is really challenging. I mean, maybe it's not so bad if you get up at nine or 10 o'clock to go until two, but I felt like, I had gotten my morning done and I was ready to eat, but the thought of getting 
to fast dinner instead was like, no. Yeah, and what that resulted in is at two o'clock, there better be food on the table or Rachel's hunger hormones were going to take over and she was just going to get ravenous on anything she could find. It really like made for some not nice afternoons because his schedule was not great for, you know, having dinner on the table at two o'clock. He would still be at work and I would be pacing like, all right, I'm eating something. So what we've learned is switch it up. The more you switch it up, the better it is for your body because then you never teach your hormones that this is what time I'm supposed to eat. And you'll notice that if you start getting into either intermittent fasting or even extended fasting, if you eat at the same exact time every day, what you're gonna notice is you could eat, for example, if your normal eating time is two o'clock, you can eat a giant 5,000 calorie meal at one o'clock, but at two o'clock, your body's gonna tell you you're hungry. Yeah. Why? Because you've trained your body, you eat at two o'clock. So what do we do? We switch it up. One day we eat at one o'clock. One day we eat at five o'clock. One day we don't even eat till eight o'clock. Exactly. Just constantly change things up. Now that is five things, but I actually have a bonus. And this one is something that we were doing when we started keto, but something that was like ingrained in our head years before, and that is you have to drink eight glasses of water a day or half, half of your, your body, body weight. weight in ounces of water. Oh my goodness. Okay, so when we started out, I'm over 250, <laughs> 260 pounds. There's not enough bathroom breaks in the world uh, to, to compete with that, but you were told that you were gonna flush out your fat. Yeah, it's nonsense. Your body's gonna tell you when you need liquids, when you need fluids, and there's no difference between drinking a cup of coffee or having a glass of water. Fluid is fluid and your body just needs to get X amount and it's gonna tell you when you need it. And Dr. Barry's got lots of videos on that. Now what you actually have to be more concerned with instead of the eight glasses of water a day is your electrolytes. Yes. Because if you're consuming all of that water but not taking in electrolytes, you're actually going to make situations worse by flushing out the existing electrolytes in your body. Exactly, I mean that makes sense, right? That you're just like, you're, you're watering it down every single time that you drink water and don't add electrolytes to that. Yeah. So those are the five things plus a bonus that we no longer do on keto. Now let us know down in the comment section, what is something that you were doing when you first started keto that you no longer do? Now if you like seeing videos like this, we have an entire playlist of different topics like this, which we're gonna link right down there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna link right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.